Constitution grants to Congress the power to regulate interstate commerce. When that phrase was written in 1787, it meant that the new federal government would be authorized to keep commerce moving regularly between the states. The states, which had just won their independence from the King of England, fell under the influence of wealthy merchants and bankers, the same merchants and bankers who had loaned the states the money with which to support the armies that fought against the king. The merchants and bankers were also in control of the state legislatures, so they were both creditors and debtors. They ran the governments that owed the money to them. So they did what you might expect them to do. They made competition difficult, and they imposed tariffs on out-of-state goods. These tariffs, of course, made it impossible to sell a product across state lines because of the cost to the consumer. And like tariffs always do, they raised prices on everything. Hence, the Commerce Clause was written so that Congress would keep commerce regular, moving freely, and without interference by the government, state or federal. Unfortunately, as we all know, we moved from commerce controlled by the states to commerce controlled by the feds. From the very beginning, Congress exceeded its charge of keeping commerce regular and began to control prices, conditions of travel, wages of those who made the items that moved in interstate commerce. And last year, as we all know, it tried to control health care. But Obamacare did more than regulate the insurance industry and more than force the states to expand Medicaid and more than expand Medicare. It contains what lawyers call the individual mandate. That's the clause of the law that forces every person in America to purchase health insurance from a private insurer. Not from the government, but from a private health insurance company. Thus, the question for the courts has been, does the Commerce Clause, the one that requires Congress to keep commerce regular, permit Congress to compel you to buy something you might not want or think you don't need or at the moment can't afford? Can Congress make you wear a hat in the sun? Can it make you eat broccoli at dinner? Well, 16 lawsuits have been filed in various federal trial courts around the country, and five have been ruled upon by trial judges, and two of those have made it to the United States Courts of Appeal. Last month, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit in Cincinnati said that Congress can do this. It can make you buy health insurance. Last Friday, the United States Court of Appeals for the Eleventh Circuit in Atlanta said Congress cannot. The Federal Circuit Courts of Appeal are the last stop before the Supreme Court. And when they differ on a matter of great importance for the public, this isn't a dispute between two people at a traffic intersection, the Supreme Court knows it is time to step in. So we now know that because President Obama and the Democratic Congress have forced this individual mandate upon us, its fate will be decided by nine life-tenured justices and not by our elected representatives, all because the people we send to the federal government, each of whom has sworn a solemn oath to uphold the Constitution, simply don't give a damn about it. So which do you want? A Congress that does whatever it thinks it, will, it can do to keep itself in power? A Congress that bribes the people with their own tax dollars? Or one that follows the Constitution its members have sworn to uphold? The answer is obvious.